Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Amanda Forbes and I direct a nonprofit called Trinity Education. We primarily work in developing countries and blended learning is a really crucial part of our education strategy. Simply put, blended learning is the combination of different learning modalities. And in our case, we use free online courses combined with face-to-face -face interaction in a classroom environment. In the resources for this lesson, You'll be able to learn more about different modes of delivery, find a course blueprint for your blended learning course, understand best practices for blended learning, and learn about the flipped classroom. In this video though, I want to briefly cover some practical aspects of designing blended courses for all learners, especially those from developing countries. First things first, you must know your learners. When Trinity Education first started designing blended learning courses for students in Kenya, we did not understand our students there. Since then though, we've learned a lot about the characteristics of our students. Before designing your blended learning course, it is very important to understand key characteristics of your learners, such as their group or individual orientation, comfort level with technology, and reliance on the teacher. Of course, you may not have a culturally homogeneous group of learners like Trinity Education typically does, but it helps to assess what general characteristics your learners are bringing into the classroom. The second thing you need to assess is your learner's environment. Are there a limited number of computers in the classroom? Do students have internet access at home? Is there adequate space for breakout groups and multiple discussions happening at once? If you don't know the answers to questions like this, you may be designing something that is completely unrealistic for your learners. One suggestion here is to keep things as simple as possible. A few years ago, Trinity Education started a program in Tanzania, and they only had a few laptops and met in a tent with chickens wandering around. It definitely wasn't a typical learning environment, but we made it work by keeping things very simple with large group activities and discussion. We now have options for programs that don't have internet access, all the way to programs that require extensive internet use. Once you understand your learners and their environment, it's time to start focusing on the practical aspects of designing your blended learning course. The blended course blueprint, which can be found in the learning resources section of this lesson, starts with your learning outcomes. As educators, we all know that having well-defined learning outcomes is very important. You want to think through, though, which of your outcomes are best suited to online learning and which are best suited to in-person learning. But how do you make this determination? Go back to your learner characteristics and environment. If your learning outcome is that students will analyze a piece of poetry and they are more group-oriented with limited internet access at home, then perhaps designing a group project during class is best. Or are your learners more technology oriented? Then design a project that allows them to use special software to create their analysis and then present it in class. Once you have your learning outcomes developed and you know the best ways to accomplish them, you'll want to organize everything in a learning management system. The blended course blueprint will help you lay out your ideas but a learning management system will help you organize everything for your students. That way, they not only know what they need to do, but they can review materials at any time. Trinity Education uses Canvas, but you can use any learning management system you choose, and there are many to choose from. When using a learning management system, the important thing is that you make pages engaging for the students, and you provide clear instructions for each assignment. This is an example of a page from our learning management system. And as you can see, we'd like to lay out everything for the students, even the assignments they will do in class with others. You don't have to include all of these details, but you can give your students more ownership by showing everything that is expected of them, both online and in person. When it comes to assessment, try to break out of stereotypes, like just doing online quizzes that are automatically graded or traditional presentations in front of the class. At Trinity Education, we like to use project-based learning for assessment, and students can present projects they've created that demonstrate mastery of multiple learning outcomes. 
Projects can be presented in person or posted online for evaluation, but it's always a good idea to incorporate some sort of in-person presentation so that students can showcase their work to others. There is so much more we could cover about blended learning, but hopefully these tips will get you started with your own blended learning course. Remember to start with your learner characteristics and environment, and only then move to defining your outcomes based on these characteristics. You'll make things most beneficial for your learners by providing a clear overview of all the assignments they'll complete while in the blended learning course, as well as coming up with creative assessments that incorporate both face-to-face -face and online learning modalities. You can learn more about Trinity Education's blended learning model at our website, and I wish you all the best in designing your blended learning course.